so welcome back i am alok shrivastava and as uh, we were discussing about the packages the services and the files we had talked about the meta parameters in the previous session so in this session we will be talking about tags what are tags how they help me to run a portion of my uh, code in puppet or my file so if i'll just show this so normally what happens if I run this file, the whole file will be executed. All the resources will be executed again and again. I might not want that. I want that only a particular piece of code. Say, uh, say presume I had just changed the file, conf file. So why should I bother Puppet to first check the package, then the index file, then the like service? Let me execute only this code and the file will automatically notify the service so i can skip the codes which are not required so tags can be used so consider it the tag that you see on your clothes the tag describe everything about that cloth either it's a shirt or a trouser or anything so what i do for every resource i can have a tag so puppet tag function will tell you whether the named class or the resource is present in this particular node or not and you can apply any arbitrary tags so let me just give you one simple example in this file i can apply tags to all of this say here in package i just go here i say tag so any resource you want to apply the tag just say tag and any name anything will do say I say package that's good and this I say conf file tag conf file as it is a config file so every resource I am assigning a tag tag say HTML file and tag I can apply the tag here say service that's it so every resource I had applied the tag so now if I normally apply this puppet apply pack serve without specifying any tags or anything it will run the whole as it hadn't changed anything but it will run the whole now say presume I want to execute only a certain piece of code say I change my uh, HTML file, my http.conf file. So I write here using tags. That's it. So I have changed it. But I don't want the other things to get checked or anything. So what I do, I just write here hyphen hyphen tags and then conf file, whatever the tag was. That's it. So only that piece of code will be applied. So this is how that makes your life much more easier and you will be able to run the code much more faster in a less time and if you see it has changed the, so the old file is being overwritten now the question is that okay the old file is overwritten so that means if i go to etc stdbd conf http.conf I have the new file I should have the new file fair enough I have the new file but where is the old file where is the old file has gone so now puppet and in case say presume we have done some wrong changes I want the old file back how I can do that so puppet creates a backup copy of the file that it changes and stores it in a place called as client bucket now the location of the client bucket may vary from version to version of, of uh, Puppet. So you need to check that in which particular folder it's saving. Like in earlier version of uh, uh, Puppet, it used to save an under var lib Puppet client bucket, but not in the newer version 4.8. So any file that it overwrite, it copy the old file in the client bucket folder. So the first thing I if I am not sure 
I can simply give this find command to search for the folder name as client bucket. So here it is opt puppet labs puppet cache client bucket. So that means if I move into this folder, I should be able to get the old file which was overwritten because of my act. This is the folder and here you will find a lot of folders. So it, you might find it very difficult to go inside each and every folder and search for it. So what you can do once you got the location using the find command. So I recommend you to use this command as the location might change from puppet version to version. Now you just re remember a particular word there in the file. What was there in the file? Say I know the file was coming from, right? If you see the file at c stdbd conf stdb.conf, this notify word was there, which was already there. And the newer file is using tag. So means this line was there you using notify, right? So you just need to remember any word here. Just just do a grab. Use your RSC knowledge. Recursive case insensitive search for the word notify. That's it. And whatever it is, I don't care. And in all the folders. So either you can use single quote or double quote. I put an asterisk here. So this is the file. See here under this folder A E D and it is your checksum 4477E. See here 4477E. This is the same file. This is being overwritten by this new file having the checksum of 2BEF39. So in case you want that original file back, you got the location now. Copy this location and paste it back. Copy this. So I do a copy and I do a etc stdbd conf stdb.conf in case you have wrongly overwritten the file. So that means my word using tags will be gone from this file. etc stdbd conf stdb.conf. See here. I don't have using tags here. The old file is overwritten. So client bucket is very important. For you and in this manner you will be able to create a uh, or restore a backup copy so by default puppet automatically does a backup copy in case though it is not recommended in case you don't want the puppet to save it in the client bucket folder you don't want the puppet to make a backup copy so what you can do again I'm saying it's not recommended but it's solely up to you you can just write a line here backup false that means you are instructing puppet that in case this file is overridden don't create a backup copy so this file will never be backed up inside the client bucket so client bucket can be very useful when you are working in the production environment and in case something wrong has happened so by default every local puppet agent will have its own client bucket unless and until you have a centralized client bucket which we will be learning in the later session. So this is for this small session and both the things are very important. So we had learned a lot of things about uh, the files, the client buckets. Now when this job is done, these basics are over or you are able to write these small resources or the manifests then we can gradually proceed on to uh, having our client server architecture so we will be able to create a client server architecture where whatever i will be doing i will be doing it on my server and the changes will be applied on the node so this we can do so in the next session i will just use a small couple of interesting resources like cron resource via which we can schedule the job and exec resource via which we can run a command here directly
and then we will proceed towards the client server architecture. So this is for this session. Thank you.